The struggle is real. There are so many lessons on YouTube about how to read music, but none about how or what you should be practicing to get better and master reading music. Well, your piano teacher Tim here today, and that's exactly what I'm gonna show you. I have included a link to this in the description. Um, this is an exercise online. You can either do this or you can pick up a pack of flashcards. You can find these on Amazon. And there's actually a bunch in here, but the yellow ones are the ones you want really for reading music. And you just wanna go through these again and again. A mistake a lot of students make is that they will learn how to read music and then they will stop practicing it thinking that Oh, I have it mastered already. I don't need to practice it anymore. Wrong. You need to keep practicing it on a regular basis or you'll get rusty really fast and it's something you want to practice for months. But let me show you um, this here. So there's musictheory.net slash exercises slash note. The very first thing you want to do is click on customize this exercise in the top right. And depending on how many notes you know, you want to select the range. You know, if you just know the notes on the staff, you want to select the range four on the staff. Um, you can choose uh, either to practice treble clef by itself, bass clef by itself, or both of them together called the grand staff. So I would start with treble clef, you know, work out treble clef for about five minutes, then spend five minutes on just bass clef, and then spend um, another five minutes maybe on the grand staff if you're just starting out. If you've been practicing it for a while, just spend five minutes on that grand staff. So here we go, we're gonna get started. Um, let's go through any of the other options we may or may not know. Um, accidentals, you know, uh, depends on whether you know those or not. That's just whether it's a sharp or a flat. And key signatures, I would honestly just click, yeah, the natural up here for the key signatures to start out with because that's not what we're practicing today. So what you wanna do is you want to do two things really. Um, you want to figure out, obviously, what letter note that is. And hopefully you know by now that bottom letter uh, is an E. So you can obviously click E here, and then it'll move on to the next example. But what I want you to do, what you have to do, is find the note on the keyboard as well. Because it's super duper important that you not only understand where it is on the staff, but you can find these. And you want to be able to find them fast. So there you go. I clicked E. Next one, A. You want to find them as fast as possible. A. Uh, which one's that? Oops, I forgot to select that we're only doing on the staff for bass clef, so remember to figure that out in the uh, settings, but that's an F. Let's just do maybe one or two more. I think you get the idea. Um, D. Up here. I can do them really fast. If it takes you a little bit longer, don't worry about that at all. And then you got F here. So there you go. So you want to spend, like I said, um, five minutes on each clef by itself and then five minutes on them together and then after you're doing it for a couple of months, yes, a couple of months, you want to go through and do the just the grand staff. All right, let's get on to the next exercise. The next thing you should be practicing, and this one gets even better, is intervals because if you remember from some of my other lessons, working on your intervals and learning to identify them from sight will help you read music probably 10 times faster and I'm not even exaggerating. So let me show you on how and what you should be practicing for this one. Okay, so I have another website. It's also musictheory.net, uh, but it's slash exercises slash interval. Don't worry, I put a link in the description just for you. Um, yes, just you. Now, you want to, again, adjust your settings accordingly. You probably want to start maybe just on the staff. Then you probably starting out want to just select this top option here with the natural sign. That means all these will be in the key of C um, because you have to get a little bit more advanced at intervals to do anything else. Um, display mode harmonic, huh? Oh, okay, so harmonic is when they're stacked up and down, like they are now. Melodic is when they are side to side. So I'll select the melodic, see how they're, you know, shifted off a little bit. So either one's fine. Honestly, you could even do both. Render quality. You know, starting out, I would turn that off. Because what that does is, um, if you have render, require quality, sorry, render quality. Um, 
what if you have that turned on, you're gonna have to know whether it's a perfect fourth, perfect fifth, or major six, minor six. And I haven't talked about that a lot on the channel. I am gonna make an update lesson for that. But if you're just starting out, turn that require quality off. And um, yeah, I think this is probably pretty good. Okay, so if you know anything about intervals, and again, you wanna be playing these on the piano so your brain lines up with what you're seeing on the staff with what's actually happening here. You see that if, if you ever see two notes like that and they're like side by side like that, that has to be a second because those notes are so close together that they have to move them side to side or else they would collide and the universe would entirely collapse. I'm not even kidding. So you've got B and C. You can read the notes separately if you want, but what I recommend is read the bottom note and then determine that the next note up is a second, meaning that it's right next to each other. Just to explain intervals really quick, distance between two notes. If you have a note in the next note, that's a second, one, two. If you have a note in the note up from there, that's a third. Note in the next note up, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and then octave or an eighth is also an acceptable term. All right, so we're gonna hit second here. All right, next one. See how the bottom one's on a line, that happens to be B, and then there's a line with nothing written on it and then another line? Whenever you see that, that is always a fifth. It's actually also the same if it starts on a space, there's an empty space and then another space. So that's always a fifth. All right, see how that's stacked like a snowman? That's always gonna be a third. So you got C and then E up there, third, boom. Oh, what is that? It's a line and then another line. So that is also a third. It doesn't matter whether there are both lines or both spaces. One of the quick thing I wanna mention is that all even intervals are don't match, meaning if the bottom is a line, the top will be a space. That's true for seconds, fourths, sixths, and octaves, and so forth. And now if they're odd, they will match, meaning that if the bottom's a line, the top will be a line. If the bottom's a space, top, will be a space. So third here. Uh, how about this one? G, but read the bottom note, G. And then they don't match, right? So you have a line on the bottom, space on the top. Is that an odd number interval or an even? That's even, right? Now, what you wanna do is just kinda determine how far apart they might be just glancing at it. Remember seconds are really, really close together. Fourths are a little bit up there and then this is even a little bit wider at a sixth. All right, one more. All right, B to D, what is that? We've done that one before. That's a third, right? Looks like the beginning of a stacked snowman. They both match, indicating an odd number interval. Now, how should you practice these? Well, similar to the reading music, you want to be spending, um, I would be spending 10 minutes a day just on this. And actually what you wanna do is learn reading notes up and down on the staff first, the first exercise we did. Spend a few weeks on that, get used to that first. Um, and you don't have to have it totally mastered, but after a few weeks, then be spending 10 minutes on this. So just spending 10 minutes on the first one and then 10 minutes on this one. That's how you wanna do it. Okay, well, let's get on to the next exercise, which is even more important and will even help you even more in the long run. Okay, sight reading. If you've been following me for a while, you know how important this is. This is actually the number one skill that you can be learning and practicing on the piano. Not even kidding. So take a look here. I have included, obviously, a link in the description. That's the name of the game for today. And um, these are all sight reading exercises. Now, what is sight reading? Sight reading, as the name simply implies, is when you are reading a piece of sheet music that you've never read before. Now, some quick tips on sight reading. Number one, read something that's a little bit below your current playing level. Maybe not too, too easy, but you definitely don't wanna try sight reading things that you're, you're, that's currently at your playing level and certainly not things that are above because that defeats the whole point. The whole point, which is point number two, is to get through the example making as little mistakes as possible. You're gonna make mistakes, it's gonna happen, but you want to really focus on getting the right notes, the right rhythms, if possible. 
And uh, point number three is when you go through these, let me just kind of bring these up. These are really easy ones. These are the first ones you want to start out with if you're new and uh, maybe you've been reading music for a couple of weeks. Um, so you want to go through these and you want to first, before you even start playing, take a look at the, the key signature, which is what? Well, it has one flat, right, in this one. Um, it helps if you know your key signatures a little bit, but they don't get real hard, um, really. So one or two sharps at the maximum. You want to be looking out for any dynamics. That's how loud you're playing. And there aren't any in this example. Like I said, this starts out real easy. You want to um, kind of determine your, the, your opening hand position. You know, the hand position where you're starting out. So you can start out in the right place. So you want to be spending a little bit of time even before you start playing, analyzing the piece, the little exercise rather. And then, um, you know, so it gives you the best chance of making as few mistakes as possible. All right, another point I wanna make is that you want to play through these twice. One as a genuine sight read, and then again, to correct any mistakes that you may have made. So say, right there, I clearly made a mistake. It just didn't sound right. So on my second playthrough, or before I even do my second playthrough, I'm making a mental note on where that mistake happened. And on the second playthrough, I'm gonna do my best to correct that mistake. Now, should you play it any more than that? Well, it's up to you. But I recommend playing it at least twice. Um, one is a sight read, one to correct mistakes. Okay, if you're liking the lesson so far, make sure to slam that like button because it would really, really help me out. Leave a comment because uh, that also helps me out. All right, let's get on to the assignment and then I'm going to take some student questions that I asked you on social media about reading music. Okay, your assignment is simple. It's to do the exercises that I have presented to you today in the order in which I have presented them. So first you wanna start with the note reading exercise. Like I said, spend a few weeks on that. Then you want to practice the intervals, but you also want to be practicing the note reading exercise as well. So it's more of a layered approach. You're starting with one thing, then you're adding another while keeping the first thing. And then you're gonna add that say you're reading after a few weeks of practicing your intervals. All of those are really, really important. Now the question is, do you ever stop practicing those? Um, yeah, you will actually. I mean, the, the first two, the intervals and the note reading one, after months, maybe even years, you will actually have it down to where you're getting them super lightning quick and that's where you wanna be with these. You don't wanna get them like be able to go, okay, that's a fifth and you know, you're getting them real slow. That's not good enough. You don't only need to just know it. You need it ba, 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 really, really, really fast. Sight reading though. Sight reading is something you should always constantly be practicing no matter how good you are, no matter if you're good as me or if you're way better than me, you're the best piano player in the world. You need to be sight reading on a regular basis. Um, you can, uh, you, there are actually a lot of examples on the website I gave you because there's easy examples and then there's intermediate, a few levels of those and there's difficult ones. So there's a lot to keep you there. Um, a church hymnal's a great place to find good sight reading examples because they involve a lot of playing between chords. Let me get just the piano here. You know, things like that with simple melodies. So that's a really good idea as well. You can find those online. Those are actually easier to find in book form, I find, which is kind of strange, but you know, that's another example there. And then what you can do also is you can open up piano books, lesson books that are a little bit below your level and sight read through entire pieces. Okay, I asked you on social media, I asked you on the channel and Facebook, if you had any questions about note reading. And we did get some on here on YouTube. So let's take a look at those. Okay, so on my community tab, I said, you know, the live stream happening tonight, what questions do you have about note reading? And we have the th following three questions. Uh, the first question is by Sinel1. How far ahead do you read sh the sheet music? 
And this is a very good question because this is something I haven't talked about a lot on the channel. Now, ideally, you should actually, believe it or not, be reading half a measure to a full measure ahead of where you are on the sheet music. And you may be thinking, like I did when my piano teacher told me this was, how is that possible? Like, like what? <laughs> like, you can do that? And yeah, you can. Now, I'm going to be totally honest with you. When I'm reading a piece of sheet music that's difficult for me, I cannot do this because I'm concentrating so hard on getting the right notes right where I am in the piece. But if it's a piece that um, you're, it's a little bit below your level or it's something you've been practicing for a while, ideally, yes, it's true. You should be reading um, a little bit, like I said, half a measure, like two to four beats ahead of where you actually are. That will actually allow you to look um, it will help you read music better because you'll actually be looking ahead a little bit and you'll be able to see the things coming ahead. Now, you have to be pretty good to do this. Like I said, I even struggle with it, um, but it'll allow you to be able to um, process things ahead of time. All right, next question. Hello, the next question is by Rachie Adeline, who says, I've noticed a lot of songs are just chords broken up and played in different orders in different places. So true. Sometimes on a song sheet it will say f minor above a group of notes but it won't always be exactly like an f minor chord f a flat c in that order it will sometimes be arranged f c a flat or sometimes it will repeat one note over and over again okay and then the question is is in your opinion is it useful to have that and use it in sheet music um i think you might have been uh, meant to say is it useful to know that and use it in sheet music. I, I notice it helps me a bit to read the, let's keep going here, music better, but sometimes it's confusing. So I kind of mostly understand this question. I apologize if I get it wrong, but I, what you're talking about and um, discussing here is the idea of intervals where notes don't always appear as standard chords um, like this. Hold on, <laughs> there we go. So say you have a C major chord, C, E, and G. A lot of times in music, it'll appear out of order, E, G, C. So those are just chord inversions. Those are the same chords. They are just in a different order. One thing I recommend you do, and by the way, the answer is yes, it is very useful to know this information. What I recommend you do is go through, I have a lesson on YouTube, um, how to play all the chords on piano or something like that. But if you type that in in lessons on the web, it should show up. And uh, what you want to do is you want to learn all your chords, all your majors, minors, diminished, augmented, so forth. But even more importantly so, is you want to learn how they're spelled. And by spelled, I don't mean C-H-O-R-D. I mean the three letters that make up each chord, C, E, and G. Because if you know that, right, it doesn't matter whether you're reading it as an inversion or not, I'm still seeing G, C, and E. Well, there's only one chord in the whole history of chords that that could fit, and that's a C major chord. So by knowing the three notes that they make up, even if it appears in an inversion, you'll know what chord is being played. And these are really, really useful. This is actually another technique beyond uh, even intervals, beyond um, sight reading, uh, well, maybe not beyond sight reading, but you know, on the same levels as those, because you'll see that in your sheet music and you'll identify it immediately. Oh, that's an F major chord or F minor chord in second inversion. So make sure to spend the time as well to learn your chords. I could have even included it in this lesson, but I felt like it might have been out of the scope a little bit. But great question. And the answer is, um, yeah, you can read music a lot better using chords. Okay, final question. I'll be out, but we'll see it all tomorrow. Okay, Anne, thank you. And by, this, by the way, this is by Anne Benson. Uh, moving from chord progressions to sheet music is a big step, I agree. Share your experience. Some exercises would be fine, Anne. Okay, so chord progressions. Um, back to the piano here. All a chord progression is is like a pattern of chords commonly used in a, sh uh, in a piece of music. And after you learn your chords, learning about chord progressions is really helpful because you'll find that there are some chord progressions that are literally used, and this isn't just clickbait, they're literally used in thousands and thousands and thousands of songs. There are videos out there about this. 
So by learning, say, like the 145 progression, that will really help you when you see these, which is an inevitability. You're really going to be able to pick those out right away and play them. Okay, I have an exercise for you that I found. Let me bring it up on the screen. I have included it in the description. Okay, so what should you be practicing to master this sort of thing? Well, cadence patterns. You want to be, um, I actually have a sheet here I found that works pretty well. And it actually has them for all keys. It is the most common chord progression in music. It is mixed up a little bit, but it's mixed up in a way where you'll you'll see this um, a lot. So one or C major, F major. All C slash G means is the C chord with G at the bottom. G seven C. That's also known as a one four one five seven one progression. I know it's a mouthful, but if you don't understand the theory behind it, that's fine. Just go through and practice these because even having the muscle memory, you will be able to play these when they come up in your music, which by the way, what percentage of the time or what percentage likelihood do you think it is that you're going to see these? Well, I can tell you right now that percentage is a hundred percent so you definitely need to be practicing these like i said i'm going to put a link in the description for just just for you okay it's quiz time and the point of this is is that if you can answer all these questions correctly you understand pretty well the main concepts of what we're talking about and you can probably move on to the next one the next lesson if you can't you need to watch the lesson again or parts of the lesson again to be able to find the correct answer i'm not going to give them to you here but they are in the lesson somewhere. Question one, when you're reading sheet music, should you aim for accuracy or should you aim for speed? Question number two, it's important to understand the distances between notes and be able to read them to read music effectively. What is that called, the distances between notes? Uh, a question like 2B that I actually don't have written down here, but I think is interesting that I, I briefly mentioned. If the notes um, are stacked up and down, the distances, or they are stacked like one, one at a time, one and then one over here. So basically vertically or horizontally, what is that called? What is it called when they're stacked vertically? And what is it called when they're stacked horizontally? Question number three, how often? Should you sight read? And part B to that question, should you ever, ever stop sight reading ever? Okay, those are the three questions. If you can answer them, great. If you can't, you got to go back and watch again. So where should you go from here? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to smash that subscribe button. You want to turn and hit that bell that notification bell to get notified when we have new lessons coming out, which is pretty much all the time. So you don't want to miss a beat. So after this, you should go and watch this playlist on how to read music better. But I also have another playlist here on where we practice reading notes together. So that's a perfect place to go right after you watch this one. This has been your piano teacher, Tim, here with another amazing piano lesson. And I'll check you out in the next one. Thank you so much.